All right, so in that last video a few weeks ago, um, I was talking about dethatching, how important it is to dethatch. And um, fast forward a few weeks after that, or a couple weeks after that, I made a huge mistake. As my daughter would say, I done goofed. Um, so I told in that video, I said, you know, I'm gonna wait to dethatch everything. And um, because it was really hot and I didn't wanna stress the yard out, I just started taking my yard down lower and I didn't wanna do that, so I held off. Well, what I didn't know is there was a freaking storm brewing in my yard and um, the thing like diseased out with fungus within like a week's time. It was crazy. I came out, I thought it was kind of dry even though it had been, it had been really hot and humid and um, the nighttime temperatures weren't getting down. It was rainy. It was just like a moist, gross kind of weather pattern we had. Within like a week, the whole thing was looking brown and weird. I thought it was just still the thatch and I looked closer at it and you can see here, it was all diseased out. It was this brown patch or dollar patch or whatever it was. Um, it had spread like crazy. I'd never seen that before. So I quickly went to Home Depot and I got, you know, a propiconazole, which is a fung and, you know, fungicide. And, you know, it's crappy over-the-counter stuff, but I just wanted to kind of stop it. Then I went online later and I got, um, you know, the 14.3 propiconazole, which is more like professional strength. Um, which led me to buy a new tank sprayer because the little Home Depot wants a piece of crap. And so I got a, uh, one, a battery powered one coming in the mail or in the, <laughs> in the mail uh, from Amazon. Uh, so that'll be a whole different video. Um, so that was a big problem and still is a bit of a problem, but it's, I'm getting that under control. Um, so that was a big mistake. That was, the, that was mistake number one. And so what's going on a little backstory i talked about last time me going low with everything um you know i've always been into grass and cutting lawns and even when i was a, a kid a teenager i always had like a grass business i always liked cutting and striping lawns and making them look like a ball field but i've never gone low and there's a guy on youtube his name's connor ward he's awesome and he does his yard is amazing and he keeps it like five eighths of an inch so that inspired me to go low with my yard and but what i've realized is that's a big challenge and and when you start cutting low you uncover a lot of crap it's like my yard is actually really really crappy right now because when i went low like that it made it a little more sparse in some areas a lot of crabgrass came up which i got a really good product i'm excited to put down it's called drive um i gotta put that down uh, so i'm learning a lot in the process so i figured why not bring you along with me on that on that journey of going low and learning and through my mistakes. First mistake was be aware that there could be a damn fungus in the yard and it's not just dry or it's not just thatch. It was, it was a fun, there was a fungus among us. So anyway, this, this season I've just started by like training my yard lower. I used to always cut it at like, uh, you know, three, four inches and now I'm cutting at the lowest setting my mower will go to, which is nuts. It's like on my Toro mower, it's a level A, which I think it's like an inch and a quarter. So it's tolerating it pretty well. It's just uncovering a lot of crap. And um, so I've been doing a ton of research online. I follow all the big grass guys online, which is just like, I can't even believe I just said that. But like CGI Turf, Ryan Knorr, Connor uh, Ward, all these different guys, they all have a ton of good info. Oh, the lawn care nut. Sorry, I don't want to forget him. Um, there's, there's a ton of guys online. So a lot of this is going to be a regurgitation of what they are already saying and putting out there. Uh, but the, the difference is um, their lawns already look amazing. Mine looks like crap. So you're going to go along with me and, and learn as I go. And I'm going to make mistakes and do stupid stuff and do some things right. And by next year, I'm hoping that, you know, I got to purchase some equipment, new lawnmower, a real style, not like real fake, but a real mower, not a rotary. That's the right word I'm looking for. Um, so all those things, I'm just going to, every time I do something that's important or, or has good information, I'm going to record it and put it out there. So today, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to map my yard up because I really don't know the square footage of my yard and that's really the most important thing because I've got crabgrass and I've got fungus and I need to treat those things and to properly treat them you need to know exactly how many square feet you have and I could walk with a tape measure that would work 
but I'm a super nerd and I'm gonna do it with the computer and a, you can do it with a satellite image like from Google or you could do it from a drone which I have so I did so those two things um, I'm gonna do that first I'm gonna map it out find out how much I have and then from there I'm going to um, got a boat going by some old people I don't mean that in a bad way so once I have that map I'll know exactly how to treat this properly and get and get everything under control because of it. right now I've got I'm all out of control one thing I am dominating though is my pond or my fountain that I've got that dialed in and that took me a season and I have to figure out that mess but man that thing's crystal clear now so subscribe to my channel and, and come along with me because I'm going to start with something ugly and end up with something amazing. It's going to take a year. You're going to see a lot of cool stuff. You're going to see a lot of stupid stuff. And you're going to, you're going to learn from my mistakes. And if you want to challenge and take your yard low, you can do it too. There's no reason. If you like grass like I do, if you like to cut your grass, some people hate it. I love it. So let's do that. Let's figure that out. All right, so the most important part of starting any lawn care plan, whether you're trying to go low like I am or just have a good lawn and you're just doing it yourself, the most important part is knowing your square feet. Now, if you've got a very um, square yard, this is really easy. You don't even need to bother doing what I'm doing. You just length times width equals your square footage. Um, but in my case, I got a really weird, irregular shaped yard. It's pretty small, but it's a lot of twists and turns and things like that. So I needed to map it out. And to me, this was the easiest way. So I'm inside Google SketchUp. And I'm going to make some blanket assumptions that you at least know what SketchUp is. And if you don't, stop this and go download it and play around with it. It's a 3D modeling program. It's free uh, by Google. And it's got a really great tool for uh, doing exactly what we're going to I'm going to show you how to do So I've launched SketchUp. I'm um, get a new file open my little sample avatar guy here He's like a five foot seven guy or whatever his height is and what I'm going to do is I'm going to import an image now You could have gotten this off of Google Earth um, But for my area it wasn't uh, good enough quality uh, new enough image to really make it work uh, so I took my drone up and I uh, got an image for myself. So I'm going to import that. And I'm going to go over right to the corner here. And for right now, the scale really doesn't matter because we're going to rescale it. So now I've got this in here. And let me zoom my extents and kind of rotate around. And we'll see. This is my yard from the top down from probably about eh, maybe 80, 90 feet up. And... Um, you can see that my five foot seven guy over here is obviously huge. He's a giant, so the scale is not right. So the first thing we have to do is scale this image appropriately, so we can trace it and get the get the square footage. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up to my camera panel, and I'm going to switch to parallel pro projection, and that's more of a that's not a skewed perspective look. It's straight down. So we're going to do the top down view parallel projection. That way, I know I'm square. I'm not off angle and my lines are going to be flat on the surface. So now that I have that, the next thing I have to do is actually scale the image. So I'm going to come up to my ruler tool and get my tape measure. And I'm going to zoom in to my patio. Now the most important thing is here, you have to have a known measurement to scale by. So what I did was I measured my patio using these chairs for reference, the back of the chairs for reference. So I took a tape measure I measured from here down to here and it was 254 inches so I know exactly where I measured from so I'm going to select this and I'm going to come down here and select down here and make sure the line is straight and we can tell that by because it snaps and right about here and you can tell my image is a little bit blurry one thing you want to do is if your image is really really blurry go to your preferences under uh, OpenGL Make sure large texture sizes is on. So now that I've selected those two points, at the very bottom, it looks like it did nothing, but at the very bottom, you'll see it says enter value to resize model. So I'm gonna hit 254 inches, hit return, 
and it says do you want to resize the model I'll say yes and now if we zoom extents again we can see it looks like nothing really changed but if we go back to uh, perspective and zoom again and kind of rotate around we can see just based on our little guy over here our avatar is or whatever his name is you can see now he's more appropriately scaled we'll move him over to um, the patio here and just as kind of a just a, an eye test we can see like yeah that patio is 20 feet wide so he's five foot seven so yeah that looks that looks like everything's scaled up right now it does look strange because this is a 2d image in a 3d world so the perspective is a little weird but now we've got this image scaled to the right size because we had that known dimension in the world uh, so we're going to go back to parallel projection so it's nice and square and top down view and i'm going to pan around here and now the simple task is to just start tracing out the borders of my yard and i i tend to dominate my edges pretty well so i've got a nice defined edge here god one thing that's dominating my yard is my dog oh my god look at those spots you know i tried using these um zesty paw bites and they're supposed to help with um turning your yard or it's supposed to change the ph of your dog's urine but uh it doesn't work at least maybe i gotta do two a day i don't know if anybody's got suggestions other than having the dog pee in one specific area uh, that'd be great because that is not cool anyway so what we have to do now is actually trace out all these um the yard areas so what you can do is you just come in here get your pencil tool and zoom in pretty far grab a point you can zoom in zoom out and just start tracing around right and it's easy to if you zoom in you can use some curved tools but if you can also use the just a straight line tool if you're zoomed in enough it doesn't have to be crazy accurate it's just got to be accurate enough um, and as I pan and zoom you see that like I'm out of the line tool just hit L again and it'll go back and it'll make that line continuous and if you do lose it for some reason you just select the end point it'll it'll be fine so I'm not gonna bore you with going around there because I've already done it so I'm just gonna bring up that file bring up my yard here we go close this one out so we don't have to worry about it now you can see I've I split mine into three sections and the reason I did that is because like for instance my backyard right now is really messed up and I have to uh, treat that with the fungicide but I don't necessarily have to treat my front yards even though I probably will but there's going to be times when maybe I I want to split it up so that's why I did that um, and and I color coded them but whatever so if you select these you can see it calculates the square feet. So this this top section here is 1,500 square feet. The back is 2,300. The side over here is 1,200. If you hold on the shift key, you can select all of them, and we're at 5,000. I knew I was about 5,000 because I know a bag at the standard application rates just kind of worked out, so I was assuming that. But it's nice that I have a confirmation that that's what it is. So this is really, really a valuable tool for starting any lawn program or whatever. You got to know how many square feet you have in your yard because it's if you have an irregular size. I mean, I got lucky because 5,000 works out. Bags are usually 2,500 or 5,000, so I don't have to do a whole lot of math. But let's say you have like 3,500 square feet, and I'll link to um, the lawn care nut has already, and so many other people have already talked about you know, pounds on the ground. That's really what you have to go by. Don't necessarily look at the application rate based on your spreader on the back of the bag. That's just an, that's, that's kind of a loosey goosey. You have to see how many pounds need to be applied per thousand square feet. Everything's based on a thousand square feet typically when it comes to uh, formulas. Um, so for like this bag of malorganite on here, just to go quickly, um, this is covers 2,500 square feet and it's a 36 pound bag. So if I bring up my calculator, the 36 pound bag divided by 
2,500 square feet. So that's 14.4 pounds per thousand square feet. So if you had a 3,500 square foot yard or anything irregular, you'd multiply that by uh, that 14.4 pounds. So 0.0144. And that would give you 50 pounds of product you would need for your area. Now, there's also scenarios where you need to figure out um, what setting you use and things like that. Like I said, that's been extensively covered by other people smarter than me. So this is just to give you, the whole purpose of this is just to help you figure out how many square feet you have so you can have a baseline and you know um, what you need to do from an application rate standpoint. This is also really helpful if you need to um, figure out like, because because everything's based on a thousand square feet and all the herb, herbicides and all the different stuff is based on a thousand square feet like it might say one fluid ounce to a gallon that covers a thousand square feet so this helps you kind of define what a thousand square feet is i got it lucky again that this little crap patch uh, where this basketball hoop is this patch over here is a thousand square feet now that's eventually going to be my shed and some other things but for right now, it's a great test bed for testing application rates out of a liquid sprayer or whatever it might be. I can tell how many, um, I can get that all figured out because I know that's a thousand square feet. So, but you could split any of these up. Like, let's say I split this one up here and here. And then when I select this, we can see like that's 852 square feet. So I could put some markers in my yard and figure it out. And then I could quickly find that out so it's really nice uh, it's a free tool and it's really nice to have to figure out how many square feet you have so at least now I have a great starting point I'm ready to go to start the process of at least first and foremost getting rid of that fungus and the crabgrass first and then figure out what's next after that but um, I know I've got 5,000 square feet so thanks for checking it out and I will see you when I post another video